Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. It's nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well and having a good start to the week after that fantastic result at the London Stadium yesterday where it finished West Ham 2, Man United 1. So let's talk about it. As always, guys, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor, 3retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of their website where you can purchase some really nice retro gear, as you can see from the icon that's up here, along with track jackets, polo shirts, sweatshirts, and t-shirts made by Admiral and Umbro. So let's go check those out as well. Any purchases you make through the link in the description below, the commission that the channel would normally be getting, as I always say, I'll be sending on to the charity Iron Supporting Food Banks. They're based in the Newham area and they're helping those in the Newham area and the Essex County and further afield for that matter, as they are currently supporting over 70, if probably not close to 80 separate food banks by the time of this recording. So guys, go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt. You'll be saving yourself a few quid in comparison to the, the club shop and you'll be helping those the less fortunate than you and I. But if you want to make a donation, directly to the charity without making a transaction through the affiliate link that's perfectly fine there's a just given fund link just in above it so go ch check that out as well one pound two pound five pound whatever you can afford guys believe me every single penny helps so guys let's, talk, let's start by talking about the uh, starting 11 fabianski coming in for the dropped areola to, uh, Mavropanos coming in for the drop to Bido. So we've got a back four of Wambasaka, Mavropanos, Kilman, and Emerson. Alvarez and Rodriguez in the defensive midfield position. Soler coming in for the suspended Kudus with Pakatar and Bowen supporting Antonio up front. So the typical 4 2 3 1 that we do normally see from um, Lobotigi in these games. So, guys, we were. We were very, very lucky to be nil-nil at half-time. I mean, I seriously mean that. I mean, eight minutes in, we could have been two or three down. We really could have been. And we could have been five or six down by the by the end of the first half. It was just, it, honestly, the amount of chances Man United couldn't take was unreal. At the same point, you know, to a lesser extent, we had a, we had a good few chances as well for that matter. But again, just couldn't really do much with what we were doing with the ball. Um, so, and then, yeah, the, the substitutions at half-time, just mind blowing absolutely mind blowing you know Somerville um Suchek and Tobedo coming in from Mavropanos Soler and Pakatar respectively you know it's just I maintain that the reason why we one of the reasons why we played so well was with acres of Somerville as I've been saying in my previews and two the fact that Pakatar wasn't on the field because his head wasn't right as I said in the preview and I haven't played I haven't started Pakatar for a good, a good while yet so yeah, I do. I th I generally think that's the reason. You know, those are those are the reasons. I mean, what a goal from, from um, what, how well did some of you take that goal? It was just absolutely brilliant. You know, good ball over to him from from Bowen, and Ings was on by that point on the seventy first minute, replacing Antonio. So we actually had a centre forward that was actually natural for once. And Ings sets him up. You can argue, and bam, it's in the back of the net, and it's one nil on seventy first minute, and. <laughs> Somerville just runs over and celebrates with Kudus because uh, apparently you know they are really really tight together and um, and he gets booked for taking his shirt off so and then unfortunately the Man United um, equaliser while it was it, the, a, a goal was a um, sorry a corner was being was being awarded just as pack, uh, just as Alvarez was on the floor uh, getting treatment he was walked off and he comes he, and then the corner was taken, so with one man, we're man down, Man United a man up, depending on which way you want to look at it. And they capitalise on that, and it's a great header from Xerxes up to Casemiro. It really is good. It really is good, and there's nothing much that anybody could really have done about it, and it's one all with nine minutes to go. I think it will take... Um, let me just double-check that. What was the time of the goal? Uh, yeah, nine minutes to go. And then um, we we get a penalty. Kind of. I said at the time it was a penalty and it should have been awarded. Coote didn't think so. So Man United go down to the other end um, and then it comes up on the screens just as Coote's running off to the script to be told to look at the screen. Comes up that via the Stockley Park guys have told him to take a look at the replay. Now, the problem I have with this is not only was that about a minute or so after the, the initial incident, probably, probably a little bit longer than that, but um, the fact that Delic was walking over to the Coote while he's walking over to the TV screen. Now, you can't do that. He's trying to protest his innocence. He's, you know, he's, um, and what annoys me, the fact is he clearly saw the screen as well for that matter because one of the officials had to um, move, him, move him away as I think Onana was trying to do it as well. They were looking at the screen from a sideline, further back, I should say. Um, but at the same point, once the coup awards the penalty, all the Man United players swarm in. To be fair, you know, there wasn't many... 
many shouts for a penalty other than the crowd, to be honest with you. Um, but I, I say, as I say, I think that was, I do think that was a penalty. And then all of a sudden, Delic starts doing that, which he didn't do beforehand. So he's obviously seen what's happened on the replay, and it is a handball by, by um, Danny Ings because he's putting his arms out because he's about to crash into two people from being fouled. So um, there you go. It's it's and Bowen steps up with a great penalty. Anano almost saves it. You know he was nowhere near it, but he was pretty close at the same point. Um, and then, but guys, honestly, you know, Summerfield gets man of the match, quite rightly so. Played played out of his skin. Um, Agued, uh, sorry, Agued, uh, Rodriguez and uh, Alvarez just played phenomenally well again. You can see why we, why that th why that thinking was brought in. But you know, this is what I'm saying. It's the substitutions. It worked. You know, sometimes substitutions don't work. Sometimes they do, and they huge impact. Huge impact. It's it's just it's it's incredible. You know, can you can argue in the balance of play that it's uh, it's a penalty. Um, the penalty gods were shining down on us because because uh, we didn't get the the foul the the foul and the penalty for Somerville against Chelsea, if I remember correctly. Even though Somerville was in in contact with players longer than Nings was, um, so yeah, it is. It's just I'm happy with it. I'm very 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 happy. The fact we got two wins on the bounce now at home. Yes, all right, we lost to Spurs in between those two, but. Nine games in now. We're coming up to the tenth game, so we're almost a quarter. We're just over a quarter of the way through the season. Things are starting to click, but we're not there yet. So, guys, put your comments in the comments section below. Let me know what you're thinking on this. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. The preview for the um, next game is going to be coming up very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, guys, have a fantastic um, rest of your week, and I will see you very, very soon. All the best now. Take care.